Today I'm going to show you the basics of building a sub-D surface model from a 3D wireframe sketch. Uh, this sketch originated from a 2D sketch that was imported from uh, the reference images folder. This was a sketch by uh, designer Jason Wong who won our uh, automotive design competition last fall and it just continues to be a source of inspiration for everyone at Gravity Sketch and there's just so many different ways you can interpret it. So I did this quick uh, 3D wireframe sketch to, to start to interpret his side view sketch as a 3D model. And now I'm going to begin surfacing it. Um, you've probably seen demos on how to uh, bridge curves and things like that, but I like to go straight to sub D surfacing using the ribbon stroke tool. So what I do is I go into my, my stroke menu, select uh, point mode, select ribbon stroke, select sub D, turn the stroke shape to all the way on. And then under my color and material selector, I'm going to select reflective material. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to use a medium gray to start off with. So what I do is I, I point click to create a ribbon of sub D surface. When I go into edit mode, I can switch on and off the polygonal view versus the smooth view. This is very consistent with, with any other sub D modeling program. From there, I can grab individual edges and extrude them, weld points together, or I can extract uh, extrude faces as well. I can also add additional edge loops to change the curvature. So if I go back to smooth view and I want to add additional edge loops, I can change the character of the, of the shape. So, so that's why I like to use the sub D ribbon tool because it allows me to go in and just start working to the character lines of the vehicle. But I'm only using the wireframe as a reference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my wireframe is locked, start a new layer, and just start laying out the main character lines of the sketch. Now, in each of these, I'm going to go right to polygonal view because that's going to start to give me a window into the structure of the surface. And I can see if there's any, any corrections that need to be made, any wiggles. And I'm just starting to work the main surfaces. But I can start to extrude some of those surfaces out. So here I'm going to start to I'm going to start to lay out the main body side surface according to what is in the wireframe. Get everything right where it should be. So you can also add edit points where needed. Start to give a little bit of dimension to those surfaces. And what I'm doing is I'm starting to pay attention to where I want these different volumes to come together. So for example, how do I want these, these haunches to interact with the wheel flats or the wheel openings? And again, I'm just using the, the curves as a reference, not, not too concerned with perfection because what often happens is the surface becomes um, quite different than what, what, was, what was created in the curves because what looks good in the curves doesn't always translate perfectly to what, uh, to what looks right in the surface. And 
And I'm, I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm looking at each of the polygons and looking to make sure there aren't any strange twists or turns. I'm also paying attention to, uh, you can see I'm actually setting up a bit of a, a gap, a controlled gap between some of these volumes. And what that's going to do is help me define the transitions between surfaces. So moving up to the front, I'll start to work towards my, my wheel flat here in the front. I also like to have my surface topology sort of fanning out from the wheel openings. So once again, I'm going to start to look at where my surfaces are landing and to try to create this, this uh, uniform gap so that when I start to bridge surfaces together, I get an, a nice controlled, um, nice controlled transition. You can see I have this gap here and this gap here. Okay, uh, so here I'm going to start to define the lower part of the body side. And again, I'm trying to avoid uh, any major twists or turns in the surfaces. So as you can see, I'm keeping everything separate right now, and that's purely intentional. I'm also paying attention to where my points and edges come together between volumes. So at this point, I'm going to mirror all my objects. And the reason I do this is I like to sometimes look at the model without the mirror plane in place. So I'm starting to get a very nice impression of what the dimensions of the surfaces are doing and how the surfaces are coming together. Now I'm going to select a darker shader, maybe like a dark, dark gray, and start to lay out the, the greenhouse. Again, I'm going to turn on mirroring and turn on auto select loops and I'm going to join the center line. So now I have curvature continuity at the center line. Now I can go to my um, polygonal view. And I can start to figure out how these, these surfaces transition. I'm keeping everything loose for the moment. We'll start to join everything together in a few minutes. So you can see I've, I've just gone straight from the center line to the rail. So what I'm going to do now is put a, uh, an extra edge loop near the center line and then bring that out. So now I have a fairly even distribution of, of polygons. Now I can start to fine tune this, this uh, face of windscreen. Okay, so now I'm at a point where I can start to look at my the quality of my surfaces. So I'm going to turn my um, subdivisions on. And at this point, I'm also going to go into my environment settings and turn on a, uh, a more reflective environment. So I'm going to use the skyline environment. And so now I can start to see how the highlights and surfaces are tracking across uh, across the sub D objects. So you can see right now I don't have enough um, tension between 
the top of the windscreen and the roof rail. So I'm just going to add another um, edge loop, bring it out a little bit. And now I have quite a bit more tension. Spread those out a little bit. So I'm taking the glass well below the belt line because the belt line is going to overlap it. So at this point, I'm going to go in and turn on my uh, turn on my main body surfaces, put those into smooth view, and I can start to see how those surfaces are tracking. So generally, I have, I have good surface topology. Everything is heading in the right direction. And I have the basic building blocks of what I need. One thing I think I might do is just add this kind of roll, roll bar shape. I think that could be a really cool feature. Yeah, so now I have all the basic uh, basic surfaces that I need to start completing the, uh, the model. And in the next session, I'm going to show you how to merge all of these different objects and start to control your surface transitions. Thanks for watching.